Hello people, so today my video is going to be on, as you can see by the title, reading my dream journal. Um, I like did a poll on my Instagram and the majority said yes, but even if it didn't say, say yes, I would have done it anyway. I also might have to change like where I'm sitting because my mum is going to be going to bed soon and I can't be like talking really loud in the room next to her, so I might have to go downstairs. To just get straight into the video, I have been writing my dreams down since 2013 this is my original dream journal i called it a dream log this is basically all my dreams from 2013 like well it's not it's from about i would say may to september of 2013 and i've been on and off doing it for uh, for a couple of years this is all my dreams from 2016 these are from 2017 no, these are from like the early start of 2017 and now I am onto this book what I started on July 24th um, 2017 and I got this from the New Forest in it it says dream books are used to record uh, record your dreams keeping a record of your dreams is very important as dreaming is in integral to performing magic as well as acquiring balance to your physical and mental life. So basically I bought this book in Purley in the New Forest and if you have ever heard of that it's like a witch's town so this like I bought in a witch's shop so that's why it talks about magic. It says how to keep how to use your dream book. Keep your dream book by your bed with a pen so that you are able to write down your dreams as soon as you wake up. Make a note of key words, images and symbols that feature in your dreams so that nothing important is missed. When you have a record of your dreams, you will be able to reflect and interpret your dreams at a later time. In time, you will be able to see patterns and recurring themes which will give you a greater insight and understanding of your inner being, body and soul. So, basically, the reason I keep a dream book, I don't lose it. I definitely don't lucid dream I don't think um, but I do dream very vividly well as vividly as I know because I'm the only one in my own head you know you get those dreams where like you're affected the whole day I'll get them like quite regularly like twice a week and my dreams are just quite weird like I'll like often like like text my friends or I'll tell my mum like oh my god this is my dream I had last night and they're sitting there like oh, what the fuck um, so that's why I write down my dreams I've always been interesting dreaming. Also, the more I write down my dreams, the more I can remember them. And it's funny because, like, I can go back to this book in 2013 when I was 14 and I'll read it back and I'll remember them all. I've been really into watching, like, dream journal readings on YouTube at the moment. So I thought I'd read some of my own from this book. And I'm not going to read all of them because there's quite a few because I did stop in the summer and I've just started up again so there's not a lot but there's probably like 50 in here and I'm not going to read that because that would be the longest thing ever and also any names I mention will not be the real names um, like because like, I dream about all my friends in here, people I don't like um, so I'm just going to change all the names but to be honest if you're my friend You'll probably know what dreams are about you because I've probably already told you. This isn't a very interesting dream, but this was the first one I ever wrote down, so I'm going to read this one first. 24th of July 2017. I was at college and lived in three police boxes with Jenny and Tammy, and there was a really bright street lamp. We had to choose boxes for next year, and cho I chose the one on the end because it looked like the TARDIS and it had a back garden with loads of flowers. So like, that's really boring, but... That was my first dream I wrote in there. A lot of my dreams are like, a lot of the time like about death or like guns and stuff like that. So some of them do sound quite weird but that's what I wrote down, that's what I dreamt about so I wrote it down. I was in a dark alley, I need to think of names. I was in a dark alley with Tommy and Susie and I couldn't find Tommy. We were looking through shops in the dark alley and I saw him. He tried to kill himself by drink, that's not funny, why did I laugh? He tried to kill himself by drinking acid and bleach and someone was holding him down with their fingers down, their th down his throat trying to make him be sick and he was crying. Then I got lost in the alley and there were loads of cardboard boxes in the room where I was and someone was holding a gun to my face. There's loads about the Isle of Wight in the beginning because I went to the Isle of Wight after buying this 
book. I'm going to read this. This is a very long one. This is like five pages. Um, but this video isn't going to be for everyone, so if you're bored, click off. Actually, I will name a name. I'll name Michael's name because, I mean, it's a bit weird if I said a different name. I was in the Holocaust and I was in a hut and there were cages by the walls with kids and teenagers in the cages. I was out of the cages and there was drugs dropped everywhere and I had to pick them up and throw them into the cages, which would be harmful to the people in them, but I had to do it. I was trying to pick up as many as I could and then one of the soldiers kept hitting me so I had to start throwing them into the cages. There was a cage which had a covering over it and it was tiny. A girl was in it and I took off the covering so she'd be able to see. I was then walking through the middle of the hut and there were three girls and one of them was holding a small grey puppy. I then turned into the girl. A soldier came over and shouted to give it over and I was crying and said I would give it to the other soldier at the back if I could walk over and give it to him. He said yes, yeah, so I started walking to the back, uh, to the back left. There was an opening to a field. We ran through the opening and ran through the field as quick as possible as we were being chased. We went to the field on the left and there were rows of tall flowers and I said we needed to hide in them. I crawled through and let the dog run so it had a chance. We were then in a ship, what was a cruise for soldiers. But the ship wasn't on sea, it was on cars. So we were running to get to the back and there was a gap in the floor which dropped to the sea, even though it's not on the sea, and the girl behind me fell through. The girl behind that was her sister and she decided to kill herself because her sister had died, but, but I couldn't scream because they were try I was trying to hide. I was then left with the young girl and we got to her bedroom. There was another door and we went through it and there were two crew members in there. I pleaded not to tell anyone and they were so nice and helped us hide. A family came into the bedroom and the woman hid me in the behind the shower curtain but they found me and they were going to report us so we had to get off the ship and started running. We ran up to a deserted building, then it was night and it was me and Michael in a car driving to get away and we were being f followed by helicopters everywhere. We got on a bridge and it was a dead end so we had to get out of the car. The sea was either side and there was a man behind us also trying to get away and he ran into the sea and I told Michael we need to do that. We were then in the water and Nick was there. We were running through the dark hide hiding and dipping into the water. There was a person with loads of yellow balloons and it was actually but it was actually a gun and they started shooting at me and Michael and we hid behind a cement pillar but Nick, who was ahead of us, got shot and someone put a chain round his head. Me and Michael then started running again and we had to pull the chain off of Nick's head to break his skull. Eventually we were safe and me and Michael went to get name tags and we had to change our identity and my new name was Chloe. A bit freaky. A lot of my dreams are quite gory. This was one I can so clearly remember. I was a three year old boy and mum was trying to kill me and then I caught on to that she was killing me. I went to a house and it also looked like Nanny's house but it also looked like the dump. So like where you put your rubbish. And it was really high up. She kept trying to push me off and then realised and secretly got a bag together so I could run away. She went to the bathroom so I knew it was my one chance. She came back in and I said I was looking at some books. She went out again and I knew I had to run for it. It was then me and Michael and we were running from Sarah. We were running from Sarah who was trying to kill us. Oh my god, this makes me sound like an actual serial killer. I'm, I really, I'm not like evil. We were running from Sarah who was trying to kill us. So we ran down one road and then we ran down the other and we decided to run through back gardens of the houses. We went into the house and there was a woman and four guys, girls posing for their prom pictures. Sarah found us and the woman stabbed her multiple times but she wouldn't die so I slit her throat and decapitated her. I am so evil in these dreams. I'm really not evil. Me and Michael had to hide the body and I was thinking in a field or a lake. We then drove around mountains to try and find a hiding place. Then we were back at the house and we looked on Snapchat and saw she was with everyone so I knew what that she wasn't dead. I was in prison and saw a calendar what said I had 90 years left and I knew I couldn't take it so I tried to kill my- oh my god it's all about killing pe people and me killing themselves. I tried to kill myself by gouging at my arm and Michael said he wouldn't watch. He then showed me how to do it and then I did it. There we go. It's all about, all my dreams are about ki people killing themselves and me killing themselves and fucking stabbings and guns. Many of my dreams are about killing myself, someone killing themselves, a gun or stabbings. I can't 
can't help it. Maybe I watch too much Walking Dead, or maybe I'm just fucked in the head. Probably the second. Oh my god, this was a really, I really enjoyed this dream. So some of them are like scary, but they're fun at the same time. Me, Michael, Chloe and Simon were in this sort of uni library and we couldn't find Simon or Chloe. Someone said they'd gone into this lift, so we went into the lift, but this lift would change you every time it stopped on a different level. So as in, I meant like, it would change your whole personality and you'd be in the same body but a different person. We were then all back together in the lift. We got out and it was night and we tried to get a ticket to find a kebab. But that doesn't make sense but that's what happened. Then we went back in and it was like a circle and we couldn't get out. We thought if we twisted the knobs we could get out but it didn't work. We then got out and I couldn't write my name as I'd forgotten who I was and how to write. Then we were in a hallway in a security building and my skin was covered in blood. I don't know why that was a fun dream, it just felt fun. I just realised I haven't been saying any dates so that's great. Next one was the 8th of February 2018. I was an actor in Stranger Things, but it was real, but it also wasn't real, but I was also a director. We were all in a ship and there was an earthquake on land which made massive waves and at this point of the dream it, like, it was real and Stranger Things was real. And there was a bedroom what me and two other girls had shared. At this point my camera cut out, um, so I'm just going to finish off reading this one. I'm having to keep my voice down because people are asleep. Me and two other girls shared the bedroom and it was ruined. It was being ruined by the ship when it kept falling over and it was really dangerous. People tried to stop me going into the room but I ran past. There were loads of drawings on the wall of Eleven and Mike. I ripped the wood off the wall to save it. Then I was an actor and we were all trying to catch this giant rabbit. Then the main director took me aside and she wanted me to help her. That's it. I don't know why I'm doing the Stranger Things. I just am at the moment and like the next three dreams are about Stranger Things. This is the 13th of February 2018. There were tunnels underground and me and the Stranger Things cast went to investigate and we weren't allowed in there and there was a camera crew trying to find us. They walked past us but they didn't see us. We got to an opening and there was gas in the air while mix of the oxygen which made a purple orange galaxy and we started floating around it. I sound like I'm on acid, only just before I fall asleep. Um, it was a rectangle cave with rectangle strings on the floor. The camera crew were chasing us and a woman who was trying to film us on her phone but they didn't get us. <laughs> then we found this home thing underground where someone was doing the washing up and there was a window even though this was underground it looked like a cottage outside. Then I was at home in a high rise flat and it was snowing so hard and there were loads of holes all over the floor and I was hoping I didn't have to go to college. There were kids walking around in the snow with no coat. Marcus, Chloe and me were in the glebe in the living rooms and we were on the sofa and by the TV. He gave her a letter and then he had a baby deck chair, what was like a doll's deck chair, and he couldn't work out how to unfold it so I had to show him. As I said earlier, I'm going to have to come downstairs at some point. I've had to come downstairs because everyone's gone to bed and also I've realised I can't talk <coughs> straight for more than half an hour about losing my voice. Some YouTuber came to mind and she was so boring and just did an Instagram live. And then we were in a car on the way back and Dean was there and she looked over and they looked like they really liked each other. Then there was a few of us and we were in the park and there was this gang in the park and there was this woman with me and two other people and then two others came onto the bench opposite. The gang tried to tie us to the benches and tried to stab us and Dean got stabbed in the leg. I managed to grab the knife and threw it at her and stabbed the woman in the head. And then we got out and we were walking past Tesco's and a few of the gang members grabbed me and tied me down to the outside of the car and drove through the doors. But then I escaped. I was in a house and people in the group and another group, so the gangs, were telling us all to get out because there was a fight going to happen. So I was telling everyone to get out and they were all ignoring me. And then it all went to shit and everyone started killing each other. One started running after me with a knife. I, tr I ran into a courtyard where, were loads, where there were loads of children's toys everywhere and there was a duvet on the floor and I knew that there was a trap door underneath. I considered fighting back with the trap door key but I knew I had no, ch no chance so I s squeezed through the door, it was really small. It was a long dark tunnel and this now somehow correlated to Stranger Things again and it was um, me reliving a version of Eleven's life. I ran through the corridors and kept slipping because it was flooded. 
I went through the door on the right and there were two doors on either side. The left was a dark conference room. The door on the right was a cupboard with a phone on the floor and I hid in there. I don't know if I dreamed this part or it actually happened. But I woke up because I could hear breathing to the left of me. Like, so in the dream I was in this cupboard <clears throat> and the door was here. And I could hear breathing and then I thought I could hear it in real life. So I woke up and looked to the left of me and there was no one there. So I went back to sleep, back into the dream. But I don't know if I dreamed that or not. I don't think I did, but I don't know. So I was still in this cupboard and I passed out and I woke up and I found Eleven and she had a baby. This dream was a couple of days ago, the 18th of February 2018. And I was so scared in this dream, it, like, it terrified me. My friend lived in a shared housing accommodation thing and I was walking through it and there was a really big man who was topless and joked around, okay this sounds really fucking weird, there was a really big man who was topless and joked around for me to touch his nipples, I said no and he cornered me in a kitchen and I couldn't get out, I screamed and then ran away. I was walking to the cinema with other people and I told them about what happened and then we walked past a billboard and there were kids camping around it and someone was having sex next to it. Then mum was having a party in a massive hall with tables like the Brits. It was funny because the Brits just happened but I didn't know it was about to happen. There were loads of people dressed all posh so like the Brits. The man then turned up and grabbed my head and rubbed my head with something so I called the police and he got taken away. I then started hallucinating from what he put on my head and I was running around the house and I couldn't find anyone and there were loads of drones that looked like little helicopters filming me and trying to find me and there was also six in the kitchen. So I ran upstairs and I looked out the window and there was a big bus with a boy in a purple shirt who was looking for me. So I basically had a breakdown and passed out and I woke up and was told it was all hallucinations. We worked out it was the man and what he had put on my head so I looked in my head through my hair and saw white powder and it was a drug so he put it on my head so it would soak into my brain and make me hallucinate. So I said I needed to cut a chunk out of my hair to prove it to the police. Then I was driving around and it was really sunny but I felt like I was going to pass out. Then my friend Josh was at a boarding school. My friend Tony said that me and him were going to go to his graduation. Okay, I can say this name. And Erin was coming as well and there was going to be a fancy dress party after so I had to choose an outfit. So I picked a velvet top with a t-shirt peplum bottom with jeans, a long burgundy jacket, what was velvet, and black heels with velvet laces at the back. And it took me so long to decide what shoes. I was running so late and asked mum to get my card and ID. Then I wanted to change my top. I then asked Erin if she had makeup and she said yes, so I freaked out because I didn't. Me and Erin got there and I'd made a poster. I don't remember what was on it, but all I remember was there was pictures of each of them on either side. I can't remember what I called the first friend, so I'm just going to say my friend. My friend was in line and we had to do that as well. Then me and mum explored the campus and we were walking up wooden stairs, what then went into the library and the stairs turned to grey. We went to the library and the stairs turned into a rock climbing wall and it took us ages to get into the library and there was a massive drop that was really far down. So the reason that dream scared we, me was the hallucinating thing because when you're in a dream weird shit happens but like weird shit was happening and I generally thought I was awake and I generally thought I was hallucinating. I may as well just read this because it's only one page long. And this was the dream I had last night, 22nd of February 2018. I planned to go to festivals on a holiday with David, Amy and Michael. Me and Michael went to a festival and I was in a tent and it was so shit. And I was on the other side of the field and in the tent I was sorting out a d uh, mattress. I walked over to the other side of the field to Michael and we left and planned to go to another festival which had Jake Bug and Arctic Monkeys. But we got the dates mixed up as I had two black posters of the festival in my room but they had different dates on them. The festival collided with the holiday and I was so sad. Then we were on the holiday and it was really hot. On the holiday I was then on a cliff. Then a man held me down and made me watch a drone full of battery acid in it. Fly over a boat where people were on it staring at the drone and it was time to explode onto them. So like... He like held my head to make me watch this drone full of battery acid what was a bomb fly over these people and I knew that it was going to explode onto them and that is fucked up a little bit so that basically is my fucked up dream journal this is what I mean I don't know if people are going to watch this and be like oh you have fucking boring dreams or are going to think you're a literal psychopath get help I'm not a psychopath my therapist told me I'm not but that's what I mean I feel like I have weird dreams I don't know why my dreams are really violent and also what doesn't help I'm on tablets what make me have really vivid dreams and I think it makes me have nightmares but like I wouldn't class them as nightmares really 
like I'd class the hallucinating one as a nightmare because that scared the shit out of me um, or I'll class a nightmare if like, I wake up crying because I have that a lot of the time and I didn't read them I doubt people are going to watch this video because I don't think a lot of people are into dreams and I didn't really explain anything after, I just wanted to talk about the dreams and read what I'd written down. I hope you did enjoy it. If I have any more interesting dreams, I'll write them down and maybe in like a couple months I'll, re I'll read some more. Or I could go into my 2013 book and read some more. But yeah, they are my fucking weird, violent, scary dreams. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. <laughs> I need a cup of tea now.